This is the Loop Deck, and if you regularly have to edit hundreds of images in Adobe Lightroom, this could just speed up your workflow and completely change the way you edit your images. So what is the Loop Deck? Well, it takes all of those sliders in Lightroom and a few other features that you may regularly use, and it turns them into some physical controls. We've got buttons, dials, and knobs here that allow you to physically move them and change those sliders within Lightroom. So let's crack on. I'll quickly explain just how it works, what all the sliders are, and then we're gonna edit an image so you can see it in use in real time. Okay, let's start logically left to right top left, undo and redo. Then we have a full screen mode. You've got a color and black and white button. Now we have a brush tool here that simply opens up the brush palette so that you can quickly with your other hand start using a graphics tablet, mouse, trackpad, whatever it is, and start applying those custom adjustments using the brush tool. Here there is a kind of shift button which shifts between a star rating for your images and a color rating. But say we press it and we select the star button. When we press the stars here, we can quickly rate any image between one star and five stars. Press that button again and all of a sudden we have the option to rate by color. Copy and paste. Again, select all the adjustments that you've applied to one of the images, hit copy, then you can use the cursor controls over here to toggle to maybe the next image, hit paste, all of those adjustments will be applied. We'll come onto the function button in just a second. Then you have a pick button. So again, sorting through your images, you find your pick, your favorite images, hit the pick and it will select that as a chosen image. Hit it again and it will unselect it. Zoom controls, you've got one left and right here so you can use it with either hand, depending perhaps on what other controls you're operating. Zoom control is very straightforward. Press the zoom button and it will zoom into that 100% magnification. Press it again and it will zoom out. Right, color controls. Now up here we have buttons for hue, saturation and luminance. Now when this is plugged in, there's a little LED, you'll see that in a second, each of these lights up so it tells you whether you're currently using hue, saturation or luminance. And then along here, we've got these roller little dials. And obviously just like Lightroom, we've got red, orange, yellow, green, the kind of light blue, dark blue, and then we've got purple and magenta. So we can press the hue button. We can then use the roller dial to adjust the hue of those blue colors. Press the saturation, we can increase or decrease the blue in the image. Now, if we don't like what we've done, we can reset it to zero because each of these dials and these knobs up here, you can simply push them in and that is actually a secondary button that resets everything to zero. And so onto the exposure settings. Again, this is just as you see in Lightroom. We've got contrast and clarity. Exposure, we've got blacks and whites, highlights, shadows. Over here, we've got the white balance and tint, vibrance and saturation. So all of those key sliders that you normally use are actually at the tips of your fingers. Again, just on the bottom right here, you've got cursor controls. They operate exactly like they do on your keyboard and they're really good for just navigating around your library really quickly. Up here, there's a big rotate and crop dial. Don't know why they've necessarily made this one so big, but again, if you use that, you can rotate your image within Lightroom and it applies that automatic crop to it. On the top right here, you've got before and after. Quite simply, that opens the before and after split screen so you can see exactly what you've done. And then again, top right, you've got export. Now, the function button down here means that a lot of these controls actually have a secondary feature. So if you press down the export button, it opens up the export dialog. However, if you press it with the function button held, it opens up a preset export that you've already arranged. Now there are obviously a range of custom buttons and knobs too. So we've got this C1 knob here. Now I use the vignette tool quite a lot. So simply use this, I can increase or decrease the strength of the vignette. Now, if I hold the function button down, the secondary feature of the C1 control is to actually, I've got it set up to use the dehaze tool. So it will increase or decrease the strength of the dehaze tool within Lightroom. Now, there are a few other features that you can use for the C1 button, and I'll just write these just here because I can't remember them off the top of my head. 
Now, as well as the C1 knob there, you've got C2 and C3 buttons. Again, these can have secondary functions depending on whether you have the function button hold down or not. Now, there are eight different things that you can use the C2 and C3 buttons, and I'll put a list of those just there. But it allows you basically to jump between, say, the develop module when you press it and the library module. Now, along the top here are eight preset buttons. These allow you to apply a preset style at the touch of a button. So any presets that you may have within Lightroom, you can simply allocate them to one of these buttons. And then you can also press the function button and apply another eight. So there's 16 different preset styles that you can have. And that's the loop deck. Now we'll plug it into my 11 inch MacBook laptop and we'll quickly edit an image. You can see exactly what it is like in use. Okay, so we've got the loop deck hooked up to my 12 inch MacBook. We've got it via a USB to USB-C connection just up here. So USB 2, I believe, going into USB-C into 12 inch MacBook. Now on Lightroom here in Lightroom, we can see I've got the library module open and using the cursor controls, we can scroll through the images. Now I wanna work on this one, 134. So I'm gonna press C2, which will open up the develop module. Now, as you can see just up here, I've actually got this as a smart preview. Now, the reason for this is the MacBook isn't the fastest laptop in the world. I'm doing a screen capture at the same time as editing an image, and I wanna show you that the loop deck produces no lag as long as you've got a fast enough machine. If you've got a faster Mac, obviously you won't be, or, or PC, you're not gonna need that smart preview. I've just got it to show that there isn't any lag. Anyway, okay, let's get started. Now, I'm gonna do this very quickly and show you just how I'd edit an image with the loop deck. The first thing I do with any image is look at the exposure. Now, I use the exposure almost like a mid-tone control. So that's about where I want the sort of overall image, the mid-tone to look. Secondly, I'd use the blacks. Now, what I'd really like here was if, if you held down the function button, it acted like the Alt key on the laptop so that when you held it down, you could kind of get that preview as to what was black and what wasn't. Now, the, um, the loop deck doesn't do that, sadly, when you hold down the function button. Hopefully, it's something they're gonna be able to add with firmware. I'd find it really useful. Anyway, we're gonna nudge the blacks down. I quite like a lot of negative space on the left-hand side where that hill is. So I'll, I'll take, I don't mind having too much black in this. So let's leave that about there. Now the whites, let's just get a tiny touch of whites burnt out in the image, just in those clouds, not too much, just a touch. Now according to the histogram, it's about there. That'll do us fine. Shadow wise, like I said, I want some dark space. Let's nudge the shadows down using this slider here. Uh, quite like that actually, it's quite extreme, but. And then highlights, we're just gonna nudge the highlights back down actually. Get this looking quite dark. Right, now let's concentrate on the blue sky. Hue, saturation, and luminance buttons here. We'll leave the hue for a second, but we'll just turn the saturation of the blues and the light blues just up a touch. And now let's also darken them, darken them both down about there that's quite like that that's looking quite nice there now we'll just we'll turn the saturation just up a touch i don't want it overly saturated move the clarity up just to add sort of a touch of sharpness and i quite like just a touch of vignette i think it will draw the eye into the image so we'll just add a add a slight vignette using the c1 control Just like that. Zoom in, pressing the zoom button there. Yep, yeah, very nice. And what else can we do? The white balance is about right. Now I think it's just a little bit too dark overall, so we'll just turn the exposure up again. Just, just a touch here, maybe. I don't know. You can comment and criticize all you want in the comments section about how I'm editing this image. This is very quick and I've not done this before. Now it looks slightly wonky, so we can use this rotate button here to rotate the image round. Now as you can see, it takes quite big jumps whenever it moves. It shifts 0.4 degrees each time, which is actually quite a lot. If you want some finesse, you can 
press the FM button and turn it and you get, as you can see, you get a, a lot more finesse when you're turning it. So that looks like it's about straight. Cool, I'm happy with that. See what it will look like in black and white. You want to press the black and white button. Very nice, flip back to color. And then let's apply presets. Let's go P1, press the P1 button. Don't like that, hit undo. Let's try P6. No, it looks, no, don't like that either really. Let's try a black and white one. So we'll hold down the function button and we'll try P6 again. And we should get a nice, oh, it's kind of a, a toned kind of version of the image. Hit undo. Let's try P1. It's taken a second there to undo, but again, that's the MacBook rather than the loop deck itself. Let's just undo that preset, oh, undo that one as well. And we've reverted back to the original image. We'll do a quick before and after pressing that button there to see what we get. Yeah, that looks nice. We'll close that window now. Now let's select this as a pick. So we've flagged it as a pick there and we're using the color rating. So let's press it as green as a finished image and let's give it a star rating. This is probably a three out of five image. So we'll do that. Anything else we can do? Okay, so we like those settings. Let's hit the copy button and then we'll move on to the next image just by using the cursor control there. And this is the next image in the sequence. We'll just paste the settings from the previous one in it. And as you can see, it's applied it. We'll jump back to our original image now. And I'm quite happy with that. So let's just press the export button. But we'll do it with the function key held down. And as you can see, it's now exporting a web version that I've preset of this image. And, and we're done. Now if we press C2, we can go back to the library and you can see there we flagged it as three star and it's now green and we should probably go to the next image and we'll also set that as three star and we'll flag that one as green as well and then we can just continue scrolling through all of our images now the other thing i like about the loop deck is that obviously i'm working on a macbook and i've got very limited screen estate but if i press the full screen button what I find is obviously the image then opens in full screen mode and I don't need all the sliders on the right hand side there because I've got everything labeled in front of me and obviously I get to know where everything is. So I can adjust the exposure of this image by turning this dial. It does get a little bit laggy when it's in the full screen mode. I think it's obviously using a lot more of the processing power and probably a, a bit more of a full screen render or something. But this may and is most likely just my MacBook rather than anything else. But what it does mean is I can make those adjustments and I don't need to worry about having the sliders. So I can use the full screen. Now let's flick out of there again. And let's get that exposure back down a bit, a bit too dark. And that's it. That really is the loop deck and how simple and quick it is to use it, set it up and to edit images. The loop deck, is it perfect? Not quite. Like I said, there's a couple of other features. Landscape photographers who use the gradient tool a lot, like I do, it would be nice to somehow have that implemented in here. For now, it's a lot easier using a, a mouse to be able to do that. It's expensive. It is £350 and it's only a, a plastic body. And let's face it, there, there isn't too much going on here kind of electronically. We're not talking about huge arrays of microprocessors or anything like that. However, it's a specialist product, so you're always gonna pay a kind of specialist premium for that. You never know, the price of it may fall a little bit over time as it becomes adopted by more people. But it's quite expensive if you're just starting out, if you're you know, an enthusiast or something. But if you're a professional and you're editing hundreds, thousands of images each week, this could be a real time saver, but only after you get used to using it. There is a bit of a learning curve and it isn't especially quick to begin with. But after a few hours of using it, you very quickly get a kind of muscle memory for where all of the buttons and the dials are. So that's my quick overview and review of the Loop Deck. What do you think of it? Are you interested in buying one? Is it too expensive? Would you be prepared to pay for it if it saved you a lot of time and money? Whatever you think, leave a message in the comments below and let's start a discussion. What do we think of the Loop Deck? Is there a place in the market for products like this or is it really just for professional use? I think it's fantastic. I can't wait to use it more in the future. Now, if I've missed anything out within this review and you've got any other questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my very best to check them all and get around and answer them all. 
if you thought this video was useful, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. But please, if you're thumbs down, just let us know why, because we want to improve the content and the reviews that we're doing on this channel. And we can only do that if you let us know. So thanks for that in advance. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can keep up to date with all the latest photo gear news and reviews. <laughs>